2021 ARC African Rally Championship. Yes. And uh, this was a testing ground for the forthcoming Safari Rally. So whatever we did in uh, Naivasha last week, it was for the good of the Safari Rally. And uh, I must say, the team has really worked hard. A team led by Phineas Kimadi, but it can't be without the good support of the government. Uh, President Uru Kenyatta, uh, CS Amina Mohamed, and the rest of the people, they have given Safari Rally, the organizers, big, big support, and that's very important. And you, the media has played a very big role. If you look at uh, last week's papers and all that, um, uh, I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. The publicity was all positive and uh, towards the building of the Safari Rally, returning to Kenya after 19 years. It's been a long time. Safari of those days and Safari of today now uh, is totally different. But the organization, the stages were good. But <laughs> drivers also themselves, they were caught unawares of the sudden rain that fell on the night before the the main day on Saturday. And when the drivers went in, uh, many of them got knocked out. And uh, great drive by Carl Tundo, five times yes. Safari Rally winner. And uh, Joey Gush, the Mint Motorsport boss, chose to give him the car, the VW Apollo R5. And he chose the right person. Because at the end of the rally, the the gap was massive. I think it's historic. As far as I can remember, nobody has won the event for more than two, three minutes, sometimes even seconds. But he did it by massive 12 minutes. And the next, the second guy, Tejvir Rai, driving a similar car, VW Polo, was placed 12 minutes adrift. So you can imagine what sort of driving Carl went through. He drove, and uh, first of all, he's, he's one of the most experienced drivers in Kenya. He's won the Safari Rally five times. He's been Kenya national champion, and a uh, very humble guy. He comes from a very good background. The dad was Safari Rally driver. The mother is involved with the East African Classic Safari Rally, which is taking place in, the, uh, in November. So Mint Motorsport also chose Ian Duncan to drive the 240 RS. And he also was, is testing it out for the Classic Rally in uh, November. The Classic Rally, again, going out uh, slightly offline, has received 75 entries. And the major guy driver is Ken Block. You know, he's a world-famous yes. uh, stunt driver. And he'll be taking place, uh, sorry, taking part in the Classic Rally. But Safari Rally, well, it's going to happen in uh, June 24th. We've got less than 50 days. Uh, the team is still in uh, Naivasha, and the team is also, um, I'll be biased, my younger brother is in charge of the media safety and uh, uh, rally coordination with, with the landowners and all that. They're going back again to check, to see if there are any repair works to be done on the stages. Because when it was wet, the drivers complained it was uh, <laughs> slightly rocky. And uh, people like Carl Tundo, sorry, Boldev Chaga and uh, 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 Onkar Rai, they, were, they got knocked out on the first day. They what is the suitable weather condition for, you know, a good rallying event? I remember, uh, again, I'll brag about me. I did 18 safari rallies yes. and I finished 15 of them. And that time safari was 5,800 kilometers. Massive. And now it's about 400 kilometers. That time it was six days. Now it's uh, two days, uh, three days. But uh, as a rally driver, and if you ask Carl, uh, you need to be prepared. Yes. Mentally, physically, car mechanically, and be prepared whether it's dry or wet, or whether it's smooth or rough. Those because are, it's always unpredictable and yeah, you can't know. No, and that's why you're called a rally driver. That's why you're in a car which is prepared to go in the rough, wet, and all that is a skill. So I, I, I just I don't know what happened to them. I just feel sorry for those guys. They tried their best. 
and uh, uh, Car, sorry, Boldev Chagar and uh, Onkar hit the same rock and broke their front arms. So, but the super rally rules, uh, which is now R2 rules, they allow a driver to rejoin the rally on the following day, but with a penalty of 10 minutes on the fastest time set by the top driver. So there were 14 of them who were knocked out on the first day, including Ian Duncan. And they rejoined the rally on the second day. And the guy, I, very incre incredible, uh, just Mangat of uh, Uganda, he was among those guys who were knocked out and he rejoined the rally the second day. But he finished a brilliant third overall, which is very good. But talking about good results, Look at Hamza. Yes. 22 year old, son of uh, Asadanwar. Asadanwar, former rally driver also. I've navigated him. Uh, his uncle is uh, Azaranwa, uh, former Safari Rally winner. I've also navigated him. And uh, Hamza is a brilliant driver. He's done good in uh, autocross events. And uh, this is his best result in the ARC Equator Rally, uh, driving a Subaru Impreza with uh, Riaz. Ismail, who is my student also. And you, he's been here before. <laughs> yeah, he's been here. And then the, the best African driver, Makre Kimadi, yes. son of uh, Phineas Kimadi. He's the president of KMSF. Yeah, KMSF. And the guy finished eighth overall. Best, but his best re result. So let's say this thing is always in blood. <laughs> looks, looks like it, because I yesterday... Because even these amazing kids uh, we've watched and the ones you're speaking about with huge potential, they are related to, you know, their fathers yeah. who navigated or were rally drivers themselves. I was, uh, I asked him, Akre, I said, are you following your father's footsteps now, yeah? Because I, in 1998, uh, Phineas and I, we drove a Hyundai Accent and we finished in the 1998 Safari Rally, 18th overall and first in group. That was still remains as historic because this was, this was the first time Hyundai got World Manufacturer's points in the World Rally Championship. So now the son here finishing eighth, but his best result in the KNRC is finishing fifth in his home ground, Meru Rally. So brilliant results. Brilliant rally, excellent work by the team in uh, Naivasha. Uh, the, no doubt, a few things here and there need to be done, but uh, it's a pity spectators are not allowed. And Quite unfortunate, is, right? It, it is for our own good. Because yeah, yeah. COVID, health comes first. Yeah, health comes first. The COVID restrictions were really very much, the guys were very strict. You couldn't go to the service areas. The drivers were isolated also. But it was good for the good for the organizers for the event, and a very good example. Uh, roughly, the FIA report says a lot good about the organization. The rally was done properly. Every department, media, safety, uh, medical, all were praised. All came up with good marks. And uh, just paint the picture for us in terms of the event we are looking forward to. Personally, in 2002, my sports for my passion for sports has been overwhelming since childhood life. I think in 2002 I was in class four, but uh, still I could follow through my uh, Mze, who is also a passionate fan of rally. But for the sake of the young ones, like the ones I'm seeing in Ken and uh, Sam, who are in there, you know. <laughs> late uh, early 20s what nature of the event are we expecting first of all including me yes i haven't seen the latest wrc cars the hyundai's the uh, toyotas and all that which are taking part in the world rally championship and doing so well this is the first time they will be coming to kenya and uh the cars, when you look, the, look at uh, YouTube and on the screen, they're quite fast. The cars are fast, but the guys, the young drivers, the totos, and the way they're handling these cars is incredible. The cars, before the turbo restrictor was yes. uh, 
34 millimeter now the 36 millimeter the bhp is about 380 bhp that means the car is touching 200 220 kph on very short stages so for the first time we'll be seeing world rally cars coming to kenya uh, a good sign good uh, publicity for kenya and as you know kenya gains a lot through tourism and all that we uh, the government is helping to for for the benefit of the country yes uh, tourism is at the highest point and uh, getting all these world rally teams coming to kenya the media the manufacturers and all that that is the biggest point but uh, I still think our local drivers, Kaltundo, Boldev Chagar, and Ankarai, Tejwir, and these guys, they, they really, they also got good experience, and they will also match the foreigners. Wow. And in terms of machines, I know every machines are expected to come here. The Equator Rally was sort of a dress rehearsal for what we're looking forward to. It's like, you know, uh, a cut and raise of the main event. Do you think Kenyan drivers are up to the task to show the rest of the world what they are capable of doing? Already you can see uh, Kaltundo driving that BW, which is a world-class car, yes. uh, and doing well, so well, and uh, winning by big margin. Uh, they've got the ability. They, 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 the local knowledge also works uh, towards their advantage. Yes. And, uh, well, let's see uh, the Safari Rally is in uh, in June. Yes. Uh, preparations are at the highest level. Yes. And uh, I'm sure even the foreigners are looking forward to coming to Kenya, where the wildlife. In fact, in this rally, there was lots of giraffes and zebras and all those animals crossing uh, crossing the road. And that's that's a really a good point. Uh, tourism. And when you're talking to foreigners about Kenyan rallying, they think of the, of, the, of the wildlife first. Yeah. So it's very interesting. But the local knowledge, yes, we have, we have, and uh, we hope to do well. We have to do well. Uh, in terms of the competition expected, some time back, uh, one of you know the local drivers said that you know this will be a game changer for Kenya Safari Rally, owing to the number and iconic nature of drivers coming to take place in this particular event. Do you agree? It depends. It, uh, <laughs> I, I would really, I, I have a feeling our drivers will match their performance also. But uh, like I said uh, earlier on, these are professional drivers. Yes. They are fully supported by teams. Yes. They don't care how much damage they do to their cars, <laughs> and they, they are well taken care they, of. They are well taken care of, and one they are young and fearless, yes, and very determined, and so, and they are going for World Rally Championship points, and for, they are not only coming to Kenya; they are going to other countries. They have uh, they have got bigger stake, but Kenya is one of the stakes, and Kenya is where they need to score good points. How big is this event? It looks so huge. It has attracted massive interest from, you know, Kenyan's president himself, who is the head of the state, cabinet secretary for sports, uh, Dr. Amina Mohamed. We've seen how she's been, you know, uh, quite a supporter of this uh, initiative. I don't know. How huge is it? It's massive. It's massive. And when the president himself shows interest, he came there on Saturday. Yes. He was there. Uh, he came, he looked at uh, several rally cars in action, and he came back to Nairobi. That is real interest. That's the president of Kenya. And that is where FIA president and the pre pres our president Jean here, Todd. Jean Todd, they've been communicating. And FIA, wow. to, to, to get direct support from a president of a country, it really works towards the event. And that's how we are able to get the safari rally back in the calendar after 19 years and remember safari has been a big big name and for safari to come back after 19 years that's the biggest biggest achievement big, something really we we are really looking forward to it happening there are about 60 containers which are going to arrive in naivasha 60 containers from the teams which are preparing to come and take part in the rally. As someone who's been frequenting in Naivash, how is the mood like in terms of the locals, the residents, how they seek embracing the event, considering that it's COVID, most of the spectators won't be allowed 
When you talk to the businessmen, it's booming. <laughs> it's really booming. The hotels are already booked. Hotels are booked. I know you already have yours, Abdul. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but for anyone, uh, first of all, okay, spectators uh, right now, I, I just pray God that something really happens. happens. So that by June, yeah. uh, maybe COVID COVID dies out. Have COVID dies and window. then uh, the res restrictions are lifted up. Yes. But hotels are fully booked. Even uh, when last week, all the hotels were booked. All the small uh, restaurants and all that, they're doing well. The businesses around Naivasha, it's, they're booming. They're really booming. And that's, that's really good for the local people there. And KWS has done brilliant. It's uh, uh, they're also directly involved with security and checkups and all that. And the area itself is brilliant. The, uh, the service itself, it's one of the biggest service yards in, in the world. 220 by 90 meter yard, tarmac. I can't remember stepping on a service, uh, service area, yes. which was tarmac in my years. Yes. Now it's tarmac. And that's, that's the good point about with the new, with the organizing team. They've put lots of effort. Lots of effort, indeed. And um, let's speak about another critical aspect of this particular event. Now that Kenya has been readmitted to FIA World Rally Championship after 19 years of waiting, is it is it a total assurance, a possibility that you know even in 2022 the event will take place in Kenya? How how how? How do the dynamics operate? Right, right now, of already, consistent <coughs> readmission on the, the FIA calendar. It's like we've signed a contract for three three years. Yes, it was 2021, 20, 22, but now 20, 21, 22, and 23. Uh -huh. So we are guaranteed for the next two years we will be holding the Safari Rally. Ah, uh -huh. and we actually need to make sure we hold it. Uh, according to the FIA rules. Yes. Everything has to be followed and done as per the FIA rules. Yes. Uh, especially the medical uh, is very important. Yes. And there were about uh, 40 ambulances, two helicopters, lots of doctors, and the team was uh, is uh, led by Dr. Raj Jutli. In case of any incident, within a couple of minutes, the ambulance and the doctor is there on the stage. So that sort of uh, preparation uh, will guarantee us to, re to remain in the WRC for at least the next two years. Determining, considering that, you know, we do it successfully, right? All measures put in place to guarantee success of the event. In the uh, other, any eventuality that, you know, the event doesn't go uh, the expected way, who, Will we get stripped off again? No, no. The, the Even though we are not being pessimistic. No, we, like I said, we hope for the best. We hope for the best, right. And uh, the organizing team has done its uh, best. The Equator Rally proved that uh, you've done the right job. You just need to improve on small bits and pieces here and there. Yes. And get ready for the safari. Uh, I'm sure any event is never 100% true. True. Yes. Yeah. You're always given a chance to improve. So safari, even if it's not 100%, it will be 90%. Sure. But they, they hope to do it 101%. Sure. And that, the FIA officials will be here, the stewards will be here, they will be here to look at any mistake that you make. And they will... So, but it highly, now it only also depends on how COVID is going to destroy this country this world. So we keep our fingers crossed. We keep our fingers crossed. But uh, medically, the uh, team was very, very well prepared in uh, Newasha. Put things into perspective in terms of your days and what you are witnessing currently in terms of even competition and the quality of the event. I don't know. What will you talk about uh, back then uh, during your competitive days when the likes of Patrick Njiru yourself, you know, the current KMSF president, Phineas Kimathi, were racing and uh, the current situation. The safari of the olden days yes. was endurance. Ah. Is how far can you take your car? 
But the safari of today is a sprint event. How quickly can you get from one end to another? Those days, safari, like uh, 5,800 kilometers, six days, and there were 94, sorry, 98 control points across the nation. You start Nairobi, go to Mombasa, Kilifi, then come, following there come the Mombasa, Park, Nairobi. Yes. Then you start Nairobi, go to Chiringanis and that side, yes. to Eldoret, go to Maralal, Meru, Embu, all those areas. And it was endurance. Yes. Though the speeds were there, the cars were, the 240 RSEs and the Nissan Silvia, uh, Opel Manta 400, uh, Opel Escona, those were rear wheel cars, rear wheel driven cars, normally aspirated. Yeah. It's now the cars are four wheel drive, turbocharged. And they're a lot lighter. Ah. They're almost like 750, 800 kilograms. Those cars were 1,000 kilograms. So the, then uh, it was endurance. And then the service parks, the service was on the main roads. If you come, if you do a stage, let's say if you enter Machakos Junction, you come through uh, uh, on the other side of the Mombasa Road, the service van is there. So um, service was organized on the main road after you've come out on the stages. Now service is in the service park. Uh -huh. The car, if it breaks, it breaks the outside the service area. Nobody is allowed to touch that car, apart from the driver and the navigator. Everything on board the car. Even if you need a screwdriver, you cannot borrow it from a friend <laughs> next to you. It has to come from the car. And if you are seen by an official of the rally yeah. that you have had assistance from the outside, outside your car, he can report you and his word is final. He is a judge of fact. You can straight away be disqualified. Those days you, you, you are pushed, you are given all sorts of assistance when you're getting stuck because those days the safari was safari, Easter and ra rainy season. Yes. If it, there was no rain, then there was no fun in safari rally. We were getting stuck and being helped. Outside, outside assistance was allowed. That Those days you're not forced to wear the overalls and helmets and all that. It was just intercom and uh, sometimes shorts and t-shirts and all that. But now the present rally cars you must have a helmet, you must have a hands device, head and neck support, fireproof overalls, the driver has to have gloves, shoes and all that. So if, if you stop, you change a tire or whatever and get into a car and buzz off without putting your seat belt, without tying your helmet properly, without putting your gloves, an official of a rally who is just a spectator watching you, sees you, reports to the clerk of the course, you are automatically disqualified. Wait. You are not allowed to have an outside assistance. If you get stuck, but in the bush there, sometimes there is nobody, so... You, you, you so we are going to wind up, uh, yeah. Abdul, but uh, one of the reasons that contributed our uh, removal from FIA World Rally Championship calendar is security concern uh, and uh, uh, among other reasons, in terms of security, by you know, a robust team that has been put in place to ensure that you know, uh, safety is 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 uh, maximally delivered as a service. I don't know. What do you assess of the same? Well, uh, is there assurance that all will be well in terms of security? Security is provided 100 uh, percent. Uh, the army was there uh, last week. The GSU and all those guys. They were. They were making sure everything was properly done. And the previous safari rally was knocked out not because of the security, because of their sponsorship. Yes. That government was not even able to give 2.5 million. It was taken away and the Turkey grabbed the chance to take the safari away from the... That time, the government, there wasn't the support we wanted from the government like now, when the government is, pop, is at the doorstep. You need this, they're there. Amina Mohamed has been in Nawasha for, 
few days. She has been very active, very supportive. And President Uru Kenyatta, him and uh, Phineas and Jean Todd, they've really combined forces and they work together. The KMSF officials, Jim Kombura, who is the event director, uh, Guvi Pambra is a clerk of the course, Anwar Sidi is a root uh, safety, media safety, and uh, Raj Jutli is a medical, Norris Ongalo, in charge of over about 600 marshals. Those are my students. Mouth-watering indeed, and yeah. very congratulations for yeah. you know contributing to the success of mm -hmm. Kenyan rallying and even your initiative in Gara to offer uh -huh. you know classes for free where people come. Those who are passionate about rallying, they attend classes but they never pay anything. Mm -hmm. Is still that the case? Yeah, yeah. I think still. I'm enrolling very soon. Because no problem. Last time you <laughs> said age is not a factor, right? No, no. You, <laughs> you start from uh, as young as a total. Yes. Up to whatever age you are. And uh, it's still, I'm doing it for free of charge. And uh, I've got 60 students in Kenya who are rallying, who are students. Wow. Uh, uh, Eric Bengi, Tuta Mionki, Helen Chiri, Lineta Uko, uh, Riaz Ismail, uh, Makre Kimadi, uh, Shamir Yusuf. All these are my students. Amazing feat. Yeah, they are. So I, and then I've got uh, thousands of marshals. And in the safari, over 400 students are my marshals, my teachers, oh, sorry, my students. Well done, Job Abdul Sidi, renowned navigator and a man who forms an integral part as far as matters rallying in the country. He rallied during, you know, the heydays, uh, and you said that, you know, how many of them? I did 18 safari 18 rallies. 18 safari rallies, and, and you managed to complete 15, 15 of them. Of them. Yeah. Amazing achievement that I know not many people can attain in our current days. Of course, it's been a pleasure having you on board. Talking about matters, WRC, we shall continue having you on board to dissect about this issue ahead of the big event which all of us are looking forward to. Thank you for coming through, Abdul, and you, for your patience. Thank you so much, Arno. You know, when you're invited, <laughs> I'm a navigator, and yes. let me tell you briefly, <laughs> as a navigator, when you're told your time of start is 8 o'clock, you need to be there half an hour earlier. If you check in a minute early, if you check in at 7.59, you've checked in one minute early. That's 60 seconds penalty. If you check in at 8.01, one minute late, it's 10 seconds penalty. You have to be precise. Wow, nice one. Amazing man indeed. Yes. And of course, always giving words of encouragement and inspiration to the young people, especially the upcoming sportsmen and women, telling them not to engage in alcoholism, something that he has never done since he was born, and even other sideshows for them to uh, you know, be guaranteed of success in their areas of specialization. Thank you for coming through, Abdul Seed, of course, renowned navigator joining us this afternoon. Touchline is the show. Very good afternoon. Hope you're still watching. Be part of the program. Let's talk about what is happening in your neighborhood. Uh, submit your insights as far as what is happening. Uhuru Kenyatta, the president of Republic of Kenya, hinting at reopening. What are you doing in your neighborhood? Any sporting activity? Tell us. Hashtag touchline Y254 to Maxwell. We're going to take a short break. Then up next is the fan favorite segment, the fan zone. Don't go away.